Catherine Elizabeth, a wedding photographer and bridal boutique owner based in San Diego. And today I'm going to be sharing eight tips for your wedding ceremony that are going to give you the most stunning photos. So I know all of you watching this probably want to know how you can make your photos even better for your wedding ceremony, and I'm going to be giving you eight different tips that are going to help you with that. The first tip I have for you is all about when to start your ceremony. So when you wanna schedule your actual ceremony to begin in relation to when the sun sets. So this is going to be really important to make sure that you are starting your ceremony with the best possible lighting. So I know sometimes you might not have control over this, but if you do, this is going to be really helpful. So the first is if you are having a first look and your ceremony is under 30 minutes, you are going to want to schedule your ceremony to start an hour and a half before sunset. If you're wondering when is sunset, all you have to do is Google, for example, sunset September 12th, San Diego 2022, and you you will find the exact sunset time that pops up in Google and just schedule approximately an hour and a half before that time. If you are not having a first look, what I recommend is to schedule your sunset for two hours before sunset if you're having your ceremony about under 30 minutes. Now, if your ceremony is more than 30 minutes, all you have to do is just add that much more time beyond 30 minutes to what I have suggested. So if you're having an hour ceremony, just schedule an extra 30 minutes before what I have suggested based on whether or not you are having a first look. That's all you need to do. There is a caveat to this. If you have gone and checked out the lighting at your ceremony and you see that if you're standing at your vow area and there are shadows casted on you at the time that's maybe an hour and a half before sunset, there's shadows on you because trees or a building or something is casting shadows on you. And if maybe you schedule your ceremony time even a 30 minutes earlier and there's no shadows on you at that time, then go 30 minutes or 20 minutes earlier than what I have suggested because you don't want like half shadow, half light on you. Um, that's not the most ideal lighting. So you don't want speckled shadows over you if you can help it. Um, that's not ideal lighting. You want clean lighting, either um, completely um, shady or completely full sun. You don't want a half and half speckled lighting. The third tip is really, really important and it's just a really quick, easy thing to do. Ask your officiant if they can step aside during your first kiss. All they have to do is just step a couple feet to the side when they are doing your first kiss or back away from the arch and then get behind it. Just get them out of sight of your first kiss so their head is not between your heads while you are kissing. Really simple thing to do and it is really impactful in your photos so that they're not like kind of creepily peeking out behind your first kiss. Really big thing to do but really simple ask. The fourth one is huge. This is to have an unplugged ceremony. So I find that when you are walking up and down the aisle and there are cell phones out in the aisle, it is extremely distracting. I find this so just ugly, for lack of a better word. And if you've already had your wedding and you had cell phones in your pictures, I am sorry, I don't mean to offend you, but this is just so distracting. You want your professional photos to be clean and free of technology in the aisle. Let your professional photographer be the only person to capture you walking up and down the aisle. And I will say that having a sign that says that the ceremony is unplugged is not enough. Hardly anybody is going to read that sign and abide by it. You need your officiant to make an announcement before the ceremony begins to not have anybody on their phone. So officiants probably done this before unless it's a family friend. So what you need to have them say is like, welcome to the wedding of so-and-so. We're so happy to have you here, blah, blah, blah. Um, today, the couple has requested that the professional photographers be the only ones to have their um, cameras out today. So please relax and unwind and just make sure that we are all being present today and let the professional photographers be the ones to capture the moment moments and you can have your phones back out after the ceremony, something like that. I'm sure they can Google like an unplugged ceremony script and find something really nice to say, but that is the really only way to announce it, that the people are actually going to listen to it and it is going to be so much more beautiful if you have an unplugged ceremony for your pictures. I promise you, this is the best thing that you can do for your pictures so that you don't have any distracting phones or people blocking your first kiss with a cell phone. If possible in your particular culture or religion or whatever it may be, have yourselves facing each other 
during the ceremony rather than having your backs to the aisle because people want to see at least part of your faces for your pictures and for your audience during your ceremony rather than just seeing your backs the whole time. I know in certain religions and cultures that might not be possible, but if it is possible, just make sure that you're facing each other or at least kind of facing your audience during the ceremony so they can see your beautiful faces. This next tip is more decor based. Know that in many cases, maybe not all, but in many cases you can reuse your reception and ceremony chairs interchangeably. So if you have maybe an upgraded chair option for your reception, but you were going to use something like an affordable folding chair for your ceremony, know that you can have your reception chairs brought down to your ceremony so that you can have the more beautiful option of those chairs for your ceremony. And then the people who are working on site, you might have to pay a little bit more for this, can reuse them for your reception. So you can have that more beautiful option for your ceremony and then go and reuse them for your reception it's kind of like flipping the space in a way and you can have those beautiful chairs for your ceremony too so you can kind of reuse the decor I've seen this done at many many weddings so that couples can actually have the beautiful chair option for both settings now you might not be able to do this in every case and sometimes you might have to pay a little bit extra to have somebody move them but you will be saving money in the long run by use, reusing those chairs for both spaces and you can do the same thing with your flowers a lot of couples will repurpose their ceremony flowers for their reception to really maximize their floral budget. So you can move the flowers around and that's a really nice way to optimize those floral budgets so that you can have beautiful flowers at your ceremony and reception so you are not wasting any flowers and you're also having really impactful flowers for your ceremony. Now my last two tips have to do with kissing. The first tip is going to be hold your ceremony kiss for at least a few seconds. If you do the fastest peck in the world, your photographer might miss it, okay? It's really fast to capture these things, and if you just go like, bam, and you're done, it is really possible they might miss it, and that's not necessarily their fault if you go way too fast. So please hold your kiss for at least a few seconds, like here and done. That's at least enough time for us to capture your kiss. Do not go too fast. And my last tip, the first part of this is optional, but I think it is really beautiful, is to give, and this does cost a little bit of money, or you can kind of DIY it um, with paper flowers or something like that, but give the people on the edge of the aisle something to toss, like a petal toss, or you could do bubbles or something like that, but some sort of backdrop element for you to walk down the aisle for your recessional hand in hand with your new um, husband or wife, and you can do that, and I think it's really beautiful, but kiss at the end of your recessional to give a second kiss to photograph. That is always the most beautiful photo. I think it's so pretty to do this, and then there's bubbles or petals or something being tossed in the background. It is so pretty to have that kiss photo and you will not regret it. So that is my final tip and I hope you all enjoyed this for eight tips for your ceremony for really stunning photos. Comment down below what is your favorite in my last video or whatever video I did for my giveaway. I had so many of you guys commenting and I really wish that I would hear from more of you on a more frequent basis. So please comment more frequently. I would love to engage with you guys more and just hear more of what you're liking on my videos, more of what you want to hear about. And I will keep doing more videos on your requests. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you have not already. I do videos every single Tuesday and I will see you guys next week. Bye.